Well, London today is, of course, one of the great world cities. I think London is the most international and most vibrant city there is, and I would say probably worldwide. London is a remarkably successful place of attracting really smart, bright, gifted young designers. It's a sort of uh, belly of the world. And you can also feel that it's uh... It's truly multicultural in the way, in the same way as New York is. And many people, young people, but also people from all over the world, is attracted because London is open. I think London has always been a place that's incredibly tolerant of, of new things, of people arriving in the city. We know that the city is based on immigration, it's based on people arriving and, and the people who are already here tolerating them. But what I think is so special with London is its vast size, it's so big. The platform of being in the city was absolutely amazing, you know, to share thoughts with the people I liked and, uh, and to be created by going to institutions such as, the, you know, the British Museum or, you know, amazing libraries that there are around or the v and I mean, there's always a lot to learn. You know. Working in a place that is so exciting is always an occasion for stimulate your brain. And the city itself has changed a lot, I think, in the last eight, nine years. You can feel that it's, uh, it's much more expensive. Production is not the most amazing, you know? I mean, you gotta travel a lot when you're based in London, and that's like costly and it's complicated if you're um, setting up a business. If you are starting out as a young designer, London's quite an expensive place to be. You might find yourself migrating right out to the external edges of the city. There's a lot of traffic, you know, like the weather is never like the most amazing one. London has really based its success on 150 years of having great art schools. We're spoiled for good schools of architecture here. They come to study here and lots of them stay and build a practice, not necessarily based on clients here, but on clients all around the world. The overly large proportion of architects in London is obviously because the education system has been strong here. You know, we all know there are little Londons all over the world in other cities where people who have studied here, you know, still keep in touch and have that umbilical connection to here. Our schools are under threat from a lack of government funding. And they have been somewhat industrialised, they've got too big, and the government is also getting rather curious about allowing students to stay once they've graduated. Any kind of political agenda that tries to limit particularly the influx of international students to the UK is a disaster. A disaster for the schools, it's a disaster for design culture here because, let's face it, if, if those people weren't coming and designers weren't here, there's no manufacturing, there's, no, there's nothing else. What we are is a crossroads for, for great creative people. Many young, fresh designers come from here, but you don't have so many strong brands. So for us, it's an interesting market to, to uh, be part of. But design is a very competitive process. Um, lots of places want to be the design capital of the world. And London's energy is, I think, going through a renaissance at the moment. Certainly, we should keep London as open a city as it can be. And any political agenda that's about sort of closing that down somehow is, is to me, just anathema to what, what London really is. London is a great place to be, but it can't be complacent. And one of the things it has to do is to go on being interesting and attractive and attracting new people, smart people and getting them to stay.